In today's video, I'm going to show you how to import all of your data into HubSpot CRM. Check it out. Okay, okay, I'm just kidding. There's a lot more to know than this. So you might be switching from a different CRM tool and want all of your data migrated, or you might be using Google Sheets, which just don't cut it. Or you might not have a CRM in the first place, which probably means that you're leaving a lot of business on the table. Whichever case it is, I'm going to show you three incredible ways how you can import your data into HubSpot CRM. Number one, we're going to explore the native import function. Two, I'm going to show you some incredible automations to get all of your data from your favorite apps imported into HubSpot with just a few clicks. And number three, we're going to take a look at the two-way sync between the apps so that all of the data gets updated in the apps and in HubSpot at the same time. Let's go. Before we begin, a couple of things that I want to get out of the way. Number one is that each CRM is designed to be used in a certain way to get the most out of it. So I have an incredible tutorial video by Stuart Gold to check out. And number two is that HubSpot has an incredible knowledge base that has import templates, for example, for contacts, for companies, etc., and has more in-depth explanations about how import function works. You can check it out in the description below. First, let's explore the native HubSpot import function. Here we are inside HubSpot, and the first thing you want to do is navigate to contacts over here, and you'll see this big import button. Let's click on that. I have two options. I can import all of the data once, or I can set up a two-way sync, which we're going to explore a little bit later in the video. So let's click on start and import. This entire import workflow is super optimized, so you just need to pick the option that suits you the most. I'm going to be walking you through each one of them and what this means. So the most popular one is just dragging a CSV file, uh, but then you can also create an opt-out list, meaning that those are the people that you do not want to contact. So this is going to be your exclusion list. And that's a great option if you're doing tons of sequences and email campaigns. And the third option is to repeat an import, meaning that all of the settings of the previous imports are going to be the same. So that's also an option. We're going to go with a simple import of a CSV file, Click on next. Here we can import one file or multiple files. It can be, for example, contacts and companies. So if you want to import multiple at the same time, you can do that. Uh, I personally am going to go with one file import. Let's click on next. And inside that one file, you might have only contacts or you might have both contacts and company information. Let me show you an example. So here in this spreadsheet, I have a list of just contacts. We have the first, the last name, the email, the phone number, and the custom field, which is called favorite food. And here we have the second CSV file that has all of the same fields, but it also contains the name of the company and the company domain. So the second file has two different objects. I'm going to pick multiple objects, click on next, and we have companies and contacts. I'm going to click on next again. Here comes the magical moment. There we have our file. For the second field, I get to choose how I want companies or contacts to be imported. This means that if a company doesn't exist, then it's going to be created. And if it does exist, it's going to be updated. So now, how does HubSpot know exactly if a company exists or if it doesn't? Does it do it based on the name of the company or does it do it based on the domain? A or B? B, you got this. How do I know this exactly? Well, this information is in that knowledge base article that I told you about. And here it looks like there is a unique identifier, which is an email for a contact and a domain name for a company. That's great to know. Let's go back to our import and click create an update for both. The language is English and let's click on next. Now we need to map the data coming from that CSV file. So all of the column names to different properties inside HubSpot. So here we get to pick two variables. Number one, what type of object is it? Is it a contact object or a company object? Here we have everything mapped automatically and correctly. First name, first name, last name, last name, email address. Then we have the name of the company, which was selected correctly. The company domain name. If you want to change this data, you can just go ahead and pick, for example, a contact property. In this case, it was done correctly. Company properties, and then here, 
let's select a company domain name. There it is. And now it's mapped correctly once again. For favorite food, this is a custom attribute. This is the favorite food of a given person. So we're going to pick contacts and then pick a property. And because favorite food is not a default property that many CRMs have, I'll need to create a custom property. So I can just click on create a new property over here. This is going to be under contact object. Then we're going to select contact information. So it's information about a given contact. Label is called favorite food. You can also add a description, which I'm not going to do. Click on next. Here we have different field types. It can be a single line text, multi-line text. It can also be a rich text, which we do not want for this case. So I'm going to pick on single line text, which is a word. So let's click on next. You can also set up some rules so that people do not put too much information about favorite food, for example. So there's minimum and maximum number of characters. You can also exclude certain special characters if you want. I do not need that. So I'm just going to click on create. And just like this, right from import, we've created a new contact property, which was nice. Let's click on next again and let's give this import a name. It's going to help us in the future when we have tons of different imports to be able to identify what we're trying to do here in the first place. I'm going to call it demo import foodies and check this box to verify that these people actually want to hear from me and I didn't buy this list from the web. Let's click on finish import and it's done. We've imported three rows and six records were created, three companies and three contacts. We can view imported companies, for example, there they are. We can click to open one. We have the company domain, the phone number, and most importantly, the contact that was automatically associated with this company. Let's click on the contact. That's our contact with all of the information. You can also click on contacts over here to see all of the information about contacts. Here's another extremely useful but very underutilized feature, and that's using contact lists. This segmentation will allow you to target your contacts way better later on. For example, you might want to send them to an email sequence later on. So let me show you how to turn that import that we've just had into a contacts list. It's actually extremely simple. Let me click on import button over here. And here at the bottom, we have our past imports. Previously, we've imported these three rows, as you remember. And here, if I click on more, I can go ahead and add imported contacts to a list. I can create a new list or add people to an existing list. I'm going to create a new one. Let's click on add. Let's rename the list to just foodies and save the list. Off to use case number two. Now that you know how to import information one time into HubSpot, how about we take a look at some automations that will allow you to get all of your existing data from other apps such as Google Sheets, Google Calendar, and even LinkedIn, and get it imported with one click to your CRM in HubSpot. For this use case, we're going to be using a workflow automation tool called Bardeen. And let me show you a couple of my favorite automations. Here I have my absolute favorite automation. It will create a new contact from a LinkedIn profile page. Let's try it out. The links to all of the automations you're about to see are down below, so do check them out. Let's go ahead and pin this automation so that we can use it later. Okay, there we have it. And now I can go to LinkedIn. Here's my LinkedIn profile page. Now, all I need to do is open up the browser extension, click on this automation card. I can create a company associated with this contact, or I can just go ahead and run this automation and boom, just one click. Here we have the contact. This second automation is not exactly going to import contacts, but it's going to export contacts out of HubSpot. It's extremely useful if you're using other email marketing tools and you want to get all of your data downloaded easily. Uh, let's go ahead and try this one out. We will have a copy of all of our contacts from HubSpot inside a Google spreadsheet. We can pick an existing one or we can create a new spreadsheet. Let's call it HubSpot contacts. And let's go ahead and run the automation. Let's click on view. And there we have our spreadsheet with all of the data. Let's move on to the third and the final use case of how to get information inside HubSpot. And that's a two-way sync, meaning that information is going to get automatically updated when you make a change inside HubSpot. All of the information is going to be updated in your other apps, such as Airtable. And if you were to make a change in Airtable, guess what? 
HubSpot contact is also going to be updated. This way you can work in both of the apps and never lose a thing. Let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to click on App Marketplace. And here we have tons of different apps to choose from, ranging from Google Maps, Google Calendar, and many more. I'm going to click on Data Sync apps, and let's see what we got here. We have Google Contacts, we also have Stripe. Probably if somebody buys, they will automatically end up in our CRM and HubSpot. And we also have Airtable. Let's click on that. Let's install this app, connect Airtable, grant access to all of my bases, and set up the first sync. We're going to do contact sync. I've created an air table earlier for my real estate video. And here I have a list of contacts. Now let's go ahead and link it up. I'm going to pick the base real estate. The table is called people. Then we need to pick the primary email field. And this is how HubSpot is going to know which contact inside HubSpot relates to which contact inside Airtable. So I only have one email field. I'm going to select that. And for this last argument, I need to point to the last modified field inside our Airtable. I actually do not have it created. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly this. There's last modified time. This way I know when the sync last happened. Let's call it last modified. Let's go back, refresh the list and select last modified. Click on done. Okay, more configurations, but I promise once you set it up once, you set it and forget it. For sync direction, there are three options. You can sync data both ways, so it's pretty much identical, or you can sync data only to HubSpot, meaning that when you make changes in Airtable, it's automatically going to be reflected inside HubSpot. But if you make changes inside HubSpot, it's not going to be reflected in Airtable. I'm going to pick two-way sync, keep HubSpot as the single point of truth for data resolution. And finally, we'll need to do field mapping like we did before. Let's click on next, let's click on next again review our configuration. We're syncing just the emails. We specifically look for only contacts inside Airtable that have a known email address. So let's click on save and sync. This is it, it's done. We have 13 contacts in sync. If I go to our Airtable over here, here we have three people that we've imported earlier. We didn't do field mapping, so this is why the data doesn't appear over here. And then if we go to our contacts list over there, we have 10 contacts coming from this Airtable. Two-way sync is an awesome feature, but it's also a paid feature. So if you want to get all of your data, all of those custom fields interrelate to each other, you must have a paid account. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your HubSpot game to the next level, I have a video about the top automations that will save you time and make you more productive as a HubSpot user. To watch it, click here next.